Hello, I've created a video game here that you can use in your classroom. Just hook up your laptop to a monitor or a data projector and you're good to go. Uh, this is a game that's based on tic-tac-toe and it's a great way to review uh, concepts in class that you've uh, done over the past week or so. Uh, it's a question and answer game and it's for two players or two teams. Chances are you'll use uh, two teams. You'll divide the class up into two uh, two teams. Okay, one team is going to be called the axes, and the other one is called the does. So we've got tic tac toe, x and o. So I decided on a cute name called ax and doe. So the ax uh, is one team, and the donuts or doe uh, does are the other team. As you can see, I have a tic tac board here. Each position is clearly marked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, here on the tic tac board. Over here we have the total for the axe team. Over here we have the total for the doe team. And over here we have a timer. Okay, right now the timer is set for 20. I'll show you how you can customize that for yourself depending on uh, your preferences. For the timer here, I have a start, stop, and a reset button um, if you need to use those. Here I've got the yellow area where the question comes and then the answer. Down here we clear the board. We have a button here in case there's a draw. And we have the next button here which you use to sequence through the questions. Alright, so let's look at a typical way that uh, gameplay would go. Um, you decide on who's going to go first, the axes or the does. Let's say the axes are going to go first. And let's say they pick a position on the tic-tac board here. You say, which one do you want? They say, okay, we'll take four. So you click on four. Turns into a question mark, which acts as a placeholder so that everyone knows and remembers what position uh, that they're going for on the board. And then I click the next button. And the question comes up here. I don't know if you can read it on YouTube with the bad picture quality, but it says, what is the capital city of Argentina? Now notice, as soon as I clicked on that, the timer is counting down. Now listen to the warning at five seconds. And then when it hits zero, we get the buzzer, and the answer must be given before the buzzer goes. All right? Uh, the cuckoo clock that I have there is a warning to let them know uh, that they only have five seconds left, and it ticks down till the buzzer. To get the answer, we just click the next button again, and we can see that the capital city of Argentina is Buenos Aires. Now, if they were to have answered the question correctly uh, before the timer ran out, all right, and usually what I will do so that I don't have to listen to the cuckoo clock and the buzzer, if they give me the answer, and I have to, I'll tell you that I accept the first answer that they give, uh, and that will be uh, their final answer. I'll click the stop button and stop the timer. I'll show you how that works in a moment. So let's say that Axe did answer the question correctly. I go back up here, I click on the question mark, turns into an Axe. Now, every single one of these boxes I can sequence through. If I click it again, donut, then back to the number four. So every time I click it, question mark, Axe, doe, four. Okay, so Axe one, so I put the ax there, and they've got that position on the board. And now it would be Doe, uh, Doe's turn. So I click on Next again. Now watch, when I click Next, the timer will automatically reset itself back to the original time, which was 20 in this case. That's one way of doing it. The other way I could do it is I could click the Reset button here and reset it manually. But I don't really need to do that. But what I did here with the timer was I wanted to make it very flexible for you, okay? Oh, by the way, take a look up here. Points equal 100 points. Every one of these has a different point value. The corner ones, because they're a bit strategic, I put at 150 points. The 2, 4, 6, and 8 position I put at 100 points. And the number 5 position is the most strategic of all, and it's worth 200 points. So right now, the board points were 100. Axe... Uh, although uh, that was Axe's turn, whoever wins three in a row, because it's called Axe and Doe three in a row, you know, tic-tac-toe, whoever gets the three in a row will get whatever board points have accumulated here. Okay, so so far, 100 points, 
go because this position is 100. All right, so it's going to be Donut's turn, so I'll click Next. Motion that repeats itself identically over and over, such as the swinging of a pendulum, is called what? Let's say that they get the answer. I believe it's periodic motion. So you click the stop button here. We'll stop the timer so we don't have to listen to the cuckoo clock. I click next and it's called periodic motion. Okay, great. Oh, I forgot it was Donut's turn. So they were going to pick a, a position. So let's say they pick nine and I forgot to do that. Okay, so Donut gets that position. Okay, and play will continue on uh, so forth. So it's Axis turn now. Play goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, regardless of whether they got it right or not. Okay? Now, if Donut or Dough did not get that right, I would just put it back to nine. Okay? And they wouldn't have gotten that position. So, regardless of whether they get it or not, I'll just put it back to Dough again. Regardless of whether they answer it correctly or not, play always alternates back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Alright, so we'll go to the next one. It's Axis turn. The process by which an amount of money increases over time is called what? Okay, well that's interest. We all know that. And, oh I forgot again. Axe is supposed to say, tell me which uh, position on the board they wanted. So let's say they wanted one and they got it. So there we go, we've got Axe. Alright, so that's how the game goes. And to show you, um, if I wanted to reset the timer here manually, I just press reset. Also I could start the timer manually. I have no idea why uh, you would do that because uh, the game is the way the game is, but who knows, maybe you just want to use the timer um, for yourself. And that's what I wa wanted to do here, was I wanted to give your, you as a teacher the flexibility uh, to be able to use the timer whatever way you want. So if I click start here, it starts the timer, and if I want to stop the timer, uh, timer, I just click stop, okay, so it stops, and then if I want to click reset, I just reset it. So I wanted to give you flexibility as far as that goes. Okay, so let me fill up the board here. Uh, we'll just pretend that we were asking questions, okay? So let's say Axe gets three in a row. That's 550 points that the board is worth, and Axe gets all these points. I click on the Axes over here, and that deposits the 550 points into the account of the Axes. So at this point, the game is now 550 to zero. I click the clear button, and it clears the board, and we keep playing, all right? And Play will just continue and continue until we're done with class time. Now, let me show you how you enter your own puzzles, okay? Here's a notepad uh, document. Hopefully, you can read it, but I'll explain it to you anyway. The very first number in the notepad document is going to be your timer maximum default value. So, here I have the number 20, and that's what my timer's at. If I wanted to have a, a default value of whatever else, I would just enter that. Then the lines after that follow the same pattern. Question, answer, question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. So you can very easily enter your own questions and answers, as many as you want, just by simply typing in to this notepad document. So it's very, very easy to use, and uh, that's what I wanted uh, for you to have. Okay? So that's my little tic-tac-toe, axe and dough, three in a row game, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and have a great day.